everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion of assembly language programming in the context of microcontrollers. And in this video, we're going to look at um, if and switch statements. Here we go. And presuming that you have programming language in C, so maybe this is going to be a little bit of a review, but that's okay. Uh, as you should know, a Boolean statement determines whether or not a block of code is executed in an if statement. And optionally, if a second block of code is executed, which would be the else um, block. Right? And a Boolean statement is a statement that evaluates either true or false. So if that original statement is true, then the if block is executed. If it's false, then the else block, if there is one, is executed. And uh, this is going to be implemented by combining test, compare, and conditional jump instructions, uh, just like or similar to what we did with the um, with looping and uh, and uh, yeah, the while loop and the for loop. So in the in the programming language C, the boolean statement is inserted between parentheses of an if keyword. And uh, the block of statements is inserted within curly brackets, so it's, it's very similar, again, to looping. And optionally, we can use the else keyword, um, and then statements, again, will be placed in curly brackets below the else keyword, which, um, again, I'm presuming you know, but the, the goal here is you, you'll notice that we're talking about C language now a little bit. We're going to start getting into C a little bit now as, as things become a little bit more complex. We don't want to always be in the assembly land here. But anyway, <clears throat> let's take a look at this assembly um, example and uh, let's walk through it and then we'll later uh, think about like what this would look like in C. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's first, I guess, uh, I guess I'm missing a slide, uh, the compare instruction right above this line compares the number five to the number zero because initial uh, R4 is initially containing the number zero. So when this comparison occurs, five to zero, uh, that's going to clear the zero flag because again, that comparison is subtracting five and zero. They're not equal and so you don't get zero. So Z equals zero. And so here now uh, we are going to jump because this is jump if not zero jump to else. So you can um, watch the PC increase. It's going to skip over the next few instructions, right? If you're in CCS, uh, you can watch that happen. <clears throat> so here now in the else uh, block, if you want to call that, or just this instruction, we're going to increment the value stored in R4. And the value was zero, and so now we're going to increment it to one. Well, there's nothing, the PC counter then keeps marching along because there was nothing immediately to, uh, to get it to jump. And so then we, then we go all the way down and we get to the, uh, the jump back up to while. And notice that's an unconditional jump back up to while. So we go back up there. And this is just to just keep the program from ending, right? Keep it running, as we've mentioned many times in this course already. All right, so the next thing we do now is compare the number five to R4 again. Uh, R4 is now containing one. So we do that comparison. That's going to clear the zero flag. It was already cleared, but it's gonna clear it again, Z equals zero. And, uh, and then we're gonna continue on this way, right, until R4 contains the number five. So we're just gonna keep incrementing, incrementing, incrementing until R4 contains the number five. In that case, then, comparing R5 with the number 5 sets the zero flag to Z equals 1. Now, the PC marches along. It does not jump since Z equals 1, so it goes to the move instruction. And here we're going to store the number 0 into R4. Then we get to this unconditional jump we're going to jump um, and leave the if else construct. And then here we have the C code. <clears throat> now notice here we're using this uh, conditional variable CNT1. 
and we're going to initialize it to zero. So that's really what was going into R4. And then the while one, the while one is to keep the program from ending, which is like the unconditional jump that we have in our assembly. And then what we did is we kept comparing the, the contents of R4 to the value five. And so you say, you see if CNT1 is equal to five, and then what are we gonna do? Well, if that was true, we moved uh, zero into R4. So we're gonna set CNT1 equal to zero. And if it wasn't true, then we incremented CNT1, right, by one. And so this is the equivalent C code. All right, switch case statement. Again, uh, this should be a review for you, how it works anyway. It's going to compare a variable against many different values, a list of values. And there's going to be a block of code corresponding to the value in the list that matches the variable. And that block of code is going to be executed. Um, there's, there's usually a default case if the variable does not match, it, match any of the cases. And you could uh, instead use like many if else uh, statements nested inside one another, but the syntax gets messy in that case. So here the switch case statement is a lot cleaner, especially for large amounts of cases. All right, so here's an example. And uh, I don't want to go through all the, I don't want to step through all of these lines. Um, these should be straightforward at this point, to be honest. Uh, if you've been watching the example videos and uh, you've been watching most of the jump videos. Uh, but there are some things that I do want to highlight here in this, in this example. So in the switch block or the switch routine, uh, you will see that each of the um, comparison instructions is paired with an with a uh, with a with a conditional jump so for example that first oval that i have highlighted um <clears throat> we're comparing let's say zero to r4 and then if if that is zero so if they do compare if they are identical then we're going to jump to one case right and then the second oval that I have there in red, we're going to compare R4 to, the, let's say, the number 1. And then if that's true, if those two compare, if they're equal, then we're going to jump to a different case, case 1. And then the third oval, you'll see, um, we're going to compare R4 to a different number. And if that's true, we're going to jump to a different case, case 2. So you can see why a comparison instruction would be paired with a jump instruction. Uh, in this case, we're using JZ jump if zero, because if we get zero from the comparison operator or the comparison instruction, then we know we want to jump. I also want to point out that at the end of the a switch um, routine, we have an unconditional jump. And it's unconditional because this is the default case. So if none of those are, is true, then we're going to jump to the default case, right? And that's got to be the last Thing listed because it's unconditional. Okay, so, but in this case, uh, the, the uh, register R4 was storing the number zero. So um, we would have jumped to case zero. And in that case, then we move, we move some, the, the purpose of this program is to move a number into R5. So like R5 is like an output variable. So we, we move the number one in hex into R5 from that move instruction, and then we hit a jump. Now, each case must utilize an unconditional jump to the end of the switch. Otherwise, if we did not have that line, the PC counter marches, or the PC counter, the program counter, <laughs> that's uh, redundant, the, the PC marches along, right? And then if we did not have that instruction, we would enter case one. And then we would enter case two and so on. So each one of the cases needs a jump to jump down and bypass all of those instructions to get to the end of the switch. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, uh, here's the, uh, uh, the C code, the equivalent C code. And as I mentioned, uh, R4 
is like the testing variable. So you can think of that as like the input variable. And then R5, register R5, is like what we're storing. So that would be like the output variable. So you would initialize those in C, right? They're initialized to, to zero in C. And then um, we have while true, right, to keep the program going. So you can see in the assembly language, I've got a unconditional jump back up to the while to keep the program going. And then inside that program, we're going to test uh, var in, right, which is like R4. So there's our switch statement in C, and we're going to test it against zero as a case. We're going to test it against one as a case. We're going to test it against two. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Case zero is testing it against the number. Uh, case zero. That should be a zero there. We're testing it against the number zero here. And then case one, because in case zero over here, we're testing it against zero, right? To, to get to case zero, it has to be equal to zero. So I have a typo here. This over here in the C code, that should be testing it against... Uh, nope, nope. Nope, sorry. <laughs> sorry, no. So yeah, we're switching. So we're, we're testing it against zero here. Testing it against zero here. If it's zero, then we set the output to be one, uh, which is what we did here. Okay, got it, yeah. We're, we're setting the output to be one here. And then we're testing the input var in against the number one here. And if that's true, uh, we're gonna set the output to be two, just like we did here uh, over in assembly. We're testing R4 against the number one, and if that's true, we go into case one and we set the output to be the number two in hex. And then case two, test it against two, and then if that's true, set the output to be four, uh, which is what we're doing here. Yeah, so there's no typo, that's good. And then the default is setting the output to be uh, zero, zero. Nice, that, that looks good to me. All right. As always, thank, thanks everybody. And um, we're next time we're going to be looking at, uh, actually we're gonna shift focus. We're gonna be looking at the MSP430's digital input and output, um, which is going to allow us to read and write logic levels uh, to those pins in, on the MS430, uh, MSP430. So uh, thank you and I will see you next time.